Okay, yeah. Um, unfortunately, our student Lucas um, couldn't attend this meeting. He's on a geology field trip this week, and the and the internet connection at the campground is not good enough. So I'm jumping in for him. Um, he's a uh, master's student of ours who's been working on a geomorphologic map of Amundsen Crater. You can go to the next slide. And um, so this is just an overview of the entire um, South Polar region with the Artemis, the well-known Artemis sites, um, and then in red, the location of the map that um, Lucas is doing. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different locations where we could have started and selected to, um, to do a geomorphologic map, but we selected for Lucas's master's thesis um, Amundsen Crater, um, because it's been proposed several times as a landing and exploration site. Um, it, here, it's you know, the map region we drew to include the Amundsen Rim and the Nobila Rim two um, sites for the Artemis sites. And then, of course, it's also been proposed as a, um, a site for the Chinese International Research Station. Um, and so it, it's large so you know it's the southernmost crater of its size and it's got a lot of geologic diversity and then i think one of the things that's particularly interesting of course is the the flat floor um that and this gives you access then to this extensive psr um that then you could get into and out of with with a rover so if you can go to the next slide so I'm going to give you the map right here at the front, and then we're going to step through the different units. Um, this is a map that's um, really kind of stepping off of the Krasilnikov et al. map that's one to 300,000 um, in scale. And we're doing this map at one to 100,000 in scale to start zooming in. You know, this is the importance of having multiple different scales, what like Laz and, and Jim were talking about. Um, and so, this is using the, the same 20 meter per pixel LDEM hillshade. Um, and because of the fact that the image data for this region are, have a lot of shadowing in there, um, but then switching back and forth between the image data. But the map is actually then completely done on the, on the hillshade. Um, and so you're gonna see, we're gonna step through uh, from, from old to new units um, and um, zero in on the geology of, of the Amundsen region. So if we can go to the next slide. Yep, OK. So um, we're going to start at the time one in the pre-Nectarian units. And this is, of course, of particular interest because um, you know we want to, when we're going to place in the South Polar region, um, have the possibility of collecting or at least gaining information about the SPA basin. And so um, Lucas first started by doing a map here to kind of define where the different old basins are um, in the mapping region. And that's including in the pink hatching there, the SPA remnants that were mapped by Krasilnikov et al. And looking at those at the edges of those in, in the new scale. Um, and then it's clear that there's a, a really high uh, relief that's within the map area of about 22 kilometers going from this um, SPA rim remnant down into the bottom of Idelson um, L crater down at the, at the southern part of the map unit. Okay, next. So when we get started mapping the nectarian units, um, they're, you know, overlying these, the pre-Nectarian SPA remnants. Um, and, and basically, here's where we're going to have, in most of these colors, the Amundsen, which is differentiated into units of, of um, ejecta deposits in the more orangey color, the crater wall, the central peak, um, there's the perched rim segments in the darker brown, and then also Nectarian kind of over there um, in the upper right corner, are other nectarian crater materials that are not um, associated with the Amundsen crater, but with other craters. Um, and this material from previous work um, likely has an excavation depth of about eight kilometers. Um, and the ejecta you can see is partially missing around some sectors of the, of the crater. Next. 
So then stepping forward in time, we get to the Imbrian units, and these include light planes and crater floor planes units. And those two unit units, at least currently, um, are grouped together as one light planes unit, this yellowish uh, colored one, because they have the same morphology and same um, absolute model ages from crater uh, size frequency distribution measurements. And then there's in, in this pink color unit C, a mantling unit, which is also sort of a light planes type unit, but it has obviously fewer craters if you look at the little picture in the bottom left uh, compared to the light planes unit. So it's a younger um, unit that was in place after the uh, light planes and crater floor planes units. And then, of course, there are these other blue units, the other um, smaller Imbrium age craters and their materials, including in the teal color secondary material from the Oriental Basin. And then this grayish blue in the bottom right, um, it, we're currently interpreting as potentially be being ejecta materials from Schrodinger. And that's one question that we need to, to um, flesh out in the rest of the work. Next. OK, so when we assemble all of these things, we get this 1 to 100,000 geologic um, scale geologic map. And here you can see the position for the Amundsen Rim and the Nobile Rim, two areas. And if we go next. The next steps are for, yep, we can go to the one after that. Yep. OK, so the next steps now that Lucas has done the 1 to 100,000 scale map is to zero in on the two Artemis landing um, areas and do 1 to 8,000 scale maps that are similar to what um, Hannes has done for the Shackleton Connecting Ridge in terms of mapping the craters and then also the regolith textures in those regions and having also a look at, for example, the slope here um, and the topography. And if we go to the next one, um, having a, a more of a, a mission-related analysis of the sun visibility and earth visibility and um, design then actually some potential um, EVAs for um, missions to those locations. So that's basically the next step of what Lucas is going to be working on. Next. Just over two minutes. Right. This is good. I'm, <laughs> I'm at the conclusion slide. Um, so, uh, so far, Lucas has, has really gotten into a lot of the details of looking at the complex impact history in this region. I mean, the Amundsen crater is large. It's nectarian in age. You can still see remnants of the SPA um, uh, massifs underneath that material. But then there are an array of Imbrian aged and Eratosthenian smaller craters that are in the regions that of interest, plus the this lighter uh, terra mantling unit that um, is, is really interesting. And we still need to look into more details about what its origin might be. And then also the potential for having ejecta material from Schrodinger or another um, Imbrian crater in, in the region. And so this map and, and the maps that, that we're going to continue to kind of push through um, our group are going to be at this 1 to 100,000 scale to give us this bit more zoomed in view of the regions um, and then provide a stepping off point for the 1 to 8,000 um, texture maps uh, for those for those regions. So we would be very happy if people want to get in touch with us and kind of coordinate on these things. We don't want to duplicate efforts that other people are doing. Um, uh, and so we, we would love to hear from you, and uh, we look forward to discussing the maps in, with you in future conferences. Thank you.